When you first log into Kyle Studio Cloud here, what you're going to find is a number of things on the side here. You've got one window here, another window here. And if you click on the big S here, you're going to find that this window will collapse. Click on it again and it will come back. Same thing if you're searching for something. If you have a Git repository, uh, if you want to look at debug, if you want to look at this, which is your history, or here, which is Amazon Web Services. Now there's a connection between Kyle Studio Cloud and Amazon Web Services where you can actually send information from your chip to the cloud, which is Amazon Web Services, and be able to have it do analysis. And what you have down here is your device manager, and these are the devices that are available right now. And this happens to be a Freedom K64, which we have plugged into the USB port of our computer. And again, we can click on that to get rid of this. And go down here to show user profile, and if we do that, you can actually connect to a GitHub account if you have one. And we're just going to click up in here to get rid of this. And we have this here, which is uh, a feedback form to give feedback to the people that are constantly updating Kyle Studio Cloud. Or you can go to Form here and find out about things on the ARM Embed OS support form. And what we have down here is Open Settings UI, Open Keyboard Shortcuts, and Color Theme, which is also available up here under file, under preferences. Now, one of the most common ones you want to maybe deal with is color theme, because right now our color theme is dark theme. And this is great for working on it. It's great. But sometimes if you're in a classroom and uh, you want students to see it, you just click and go to light theme so they can see it a little better. And if you want to go back again, you can go down here or file preferences and you go down here and say color theme and change it back to the dark theme here, which is the one that I prefer. Now at this point we want to start a new project and we can just simply click on this button here and we do it's going to come up when it's going to say create an embed project from one of the example programs below. So if we look at these example projects, let's open this up. We've got embed OS 6 projects, an empty one, one that's called Blinky, which basically turns on and off a red LED on your board. And it's the same thing in a bare metal format. We also have an example for Amazon Web Services for cloud-based stuff, and Azure and Google IoT Cloud. So these, these three are for doing cloud-based stuff. And we also have Mesh, Minimal, and Sockets. All of these are available under Embed OS 6. Under Embed OS 5, we have an empty project again, Blinky, Blinky Bare Metal, Mesh minimum sockets and Wi Fi. Embed O2, we just have Embed OS Blinky. So let's start off with Embed OS2, and we're just going to click here. And it's going to say, make this the active project because it can only be one, but we have no projects yet. We're not going to initialize it as a Git repository. And we're going to change the name here to be Blinky OS2 because there's differences between the three Blinkies. We're going to look at all three for the three different Embed OSs. So when we say add project, it comes up here and it's going to be highlighted because a highlighted project means this is the active project. We can open this up. We can click on main.cpp and there it is there. Now right now it's got a very short bit of code. It's including embed.h. It's using something called digitalout and led one happens to be a red led. And uh, what it says is while one, I'm going to turn it off and let's put a comment in here. Turns off led. And it's waiting for 0.2 seconds. And then it's going to turn on the LED. And it's just going to constantly turn it on and off every 0.2 seconds. Now, to make this run, we have to select hardware. And if we click here, this is the hardware that we've got connected, our Freedom K64. So we click here and then on the big S again to go back to here. And we need to have a target. So we're going to click here. And we're just going to type in FR, which is probably enough to select then Freedom K64, and at this point we have all these buttons. Now this is a build button, or build project. This is a run button, and what it does is it does everything this does, plus it drags and drops and re hits the reset. This does everything all in one. Right now we'll find here that we cannot debug because we're using Embed OS 2, but this is going to allow us to open a serial monitor if we have anything going to the PC screen, which we don't in this program. So for all these versions of Embed OS, we can just hit this to run the project, and it's going to start building it down here, and it's going to say flashing, which is downloading it to the board, and now it's running, and you're going to see the red light flash on and off every 0.2 seconds. Now, now that we've done that, 
what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. Notice there's nothing that says that, but up here we can say File, New, and we're going to say Embed Project. So we're going to go down here now to Embed OS 5, and we're going to look at the Blinky example again, and we're going to again change it to Blinky underscore OS 5. And again, we'll, we're not going to initialize it. We're going to say Add Project. Now once we add project, this one is going to ghost because we can only have one active project at a time. And again, we're going to click on main.cpp. Now notice that it's a little different this time. It's got not only embed.h and a bunch of other stuff, but it's going to do basically the same thing. Again, we have digital out and lead one again is a red lead. And lead equals exclamation mark lead means it's going to change the lead from being on to off, on to off every time it goes through this loop. And we have a thread sleep for blinking rate, which is... In this case, if we look over here, it's 500 milliseconds. So if we run this again, we have to again select this target. And again, we have to build target of FR. We click here. And notice this time we have all four buttons lighting up, which means for Embed OS 5, we can actually use our debug. Instead of using debug, we're just going to run it again. You click here. And it's going to build our code again. It's going through the build process. And once it does that, it's going to say preparing to run, flashing, which is downloading. And then when it's running, it's actually flashing the LED. But this time it's flashing at every half a second instead of every one fifth of a second. Let's take a look at adding another project. So let's say file. Let's go down here to new, embed project. Let's go now and uninitialize the Git. And what we're going to do down this time is look at the embed OS 6 example. And we're just going to say add project. But before we do, we're going to call it Blinky underscore OS 6. And again, the code is a little different, but it's going to do pretty much the same thing. Notice there's some more, a lot more files in here. We're going to go to main.cpp. And this time it's got 500 MS and this thread sleep for. So it's again a little bit different code. So how you do things in Embed OS 2, 5, and 6 is slightly different. But again, what we have to do now is go and chain, get our build target here of Freedom, K64, which is this guy. And again, we can just run it, and it's going to do exactly the same thing again. As it said, flashing, it's downloading it to the board, and then it's going to actually start it up. And at this point, again, it's going to flash the lid every half a second on and off. Now, as its name implies, Kyle Studio Cloud is a cloud compiler. And being on the cloud, you will have access to all the projects that you create from anywhere in the world. So if you're working, say, at school, and you create this stuff, you can go and continue working on it at home. These files will always be there. But one of the things you can do is if you select these, you can right mouse click and say Download Current Selection. Now, this is on a Mac, and it's going to create a tar or tape archive file. If I click on this, it's going to show us up here get a workspace here where I've got all three of these files. So if I go back here and I delete these and I get back to my original screen, I can actually select these three. And as it says here, you can drag and drop these back into this section here. And it will then load up Blinky, OS 5, OS 2, and OS 6 again. So you can actually take what's here and move it to another storage area, which is really quite neat. One of the other things that it mentions to bring in projects is to actually clone. And this is a link to a GitHub repository. So if I right mouse click and I say copy link address, and then I go back here and I say file, and I say clone. This will allow me to then paste in the link to the GitHub repository. And then I can call this anything I like, but I'm going to leave it. And it's going to make it the active project when it brings it in. So if I say add to project, here it comes. And it's already highlighted because it can only be the one active project. And if I go to main.cpp, we can see that this is going to be a project that's going to involve getting stuff from the keyboard and sending it to the screen. Another way that it mentioned before was we can actually import from the MB Embed online compiler. But that way of doing things doesn't make sense for most people that are just starting now because in January of 2023, the Embed online compiler was retired and everything is now moved to Kyle Studio Cloud. So this means that this option will probably be taken out at some point.